Child. <laughs> I think I speak for everybody when I say, Atlanta, y'all better count y'all days. Let's talk about it. people to have fun let's kick back let's get into a little tea let's not get too crazy but let's enjoy the sip wait 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 now i love y'all and i love doing youtube but y'all know youtube be on that bullshit and right now it's quite literally the motherfucking ghetto and listen if you know me from way back when then you know it's two things about your girl number one i hate hate being anybody's best kept secret and number two if it don't make dollars it don't make sky no motherfucking sense ho so with that said the best way to help me help you and keep the fun going is to join the patreon baby now i know i've struggled with consistency and whatnot in the past i get it 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 but listen baby when i create a fun is impacted then that makes it hard for me to do the content that y'all love whether that be story times commentary hell even my motherfucking music like it makes it extremely hard to do so i'm telling y'all now if you're only experiencing me through this platform which is youtube then baby you are only getting half of the tea so head on over to patreon to get the full sky santana experience and also because a lot of people have been asking me like oh sky when you bring in your story times back oh what happened to the laptop what happened to those videos like from 2016 that channel that i have that i was doing story times on that channel from 2016 is no longer but here's the good thing about patreon so now it's 2023 i'm older i'm 30 years old <laughs> well a whole different fucking gender now but listen how cool and exciting and fun would it be if i went back and i retold some of the old stories that you guys knew and loved from me but from a grown and older grown and sexy 30 year old mature perspective like how how dope would that be so make sure that y'all go down to the description box you click on the link to get to my patreon and y'all motherfucking subscribe ho definitely make sure that y'all follow me on twitter okay because i swear i'll be over there talking to myself like i be live reacting and live tweeting in real time to the fuck shit that y'all be putting on beyonce's internet so definitely make sure that you follow me on twitter so you can keep up with the engagement and what's not and definitely make sure that you stream my music too okay because i talk shit but i also write hits okay so don't be dumb bitch because you ain't dumb Bitch, come back to the video. What's going on, y'all? It's Scott Santana, aka Chat 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 Chi Chi. And listen, we are back for what the fuck are we back for? <laughs> Child, I was about to say, let's talk about it. But I guess, I guess, mm, I guess, I guess, I guess. Because this ain't going to be no motherfucking full review. This ain't going to be no chi view. This ain't going to be no chi cap. Okay. I'm going to just get my thoughts. I'm going to get my little nin 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 around the house. Okay. Opinions when it comes to this reboot of Real Housewives of Atlanta, New York City. Okay. Now, listen. <clears throat> listen. Listen. I don't want to get any detail wrong, so we automatically just going to jump into the tea. Even though, if you're watching this, you're probably already a Real Housewives fan and probably already know and up to date and whatnot. But in case you not, or in case you didn't know every detail, let's go ahead and get into it before I go ahead and get my thoughts and my opinions, okay? Now, we take it on over here to, what is this, Tom.com. Okay, so you know it's official. Everything you need to know about the New York, um, the new era of Real Housewives of New York, right? So, I'm not going to read all of this shit, okay? I'm not. But just know that the original, the original Real Housewives of New York, Real Housewives of New York featured a bunch of old bitches. Featured a bunch of old bitches, right? The Real Housewives of New York featured a bunch of old bitches. And, you know, they, I guess, I mean, I guess they was doing good. I didn't watch the show. I didn't care to watch the show. Okay, I'm not even going to hold you. I'm like most other black people. I didn't really start watching Real Housewives of Atlanta. And so, yes, Nene. Okay, yes. Uh, okay, y'all won. Okay, got it. I didn't start watching until Nene. And then, you know, it wasn't until throughout the years. And I feel like, honestly and truly, while some of y'all might have been here since the OC and this, that, and the third, and okay, that's far and few between. A lot of us 
was only watching Atlanta until Potomac came around. And then once Potomac came around, then motherfuckers was like, okay, we kind of get what Housewives is about. So let's kind of, mm, 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 okay. And then Salt Lake City came around and then everybody was like, okay, I like it even more, right? Then Dubai came around and then it was like, okay, I like it even more. Then obviously Ultimate Girl Trip, all of that. Now we're at the point where you have the New York cast, right? That was full of older women, older bitches that from my understanding were a bunch of drunks and then, you know, just like every other housewife show, it worked until it didn't. And it stopped working, okay? Because the last season that they had, they decided to cast a token black person on that on that channel, okay? On that channel, on that, on that season. And we just gonna call it think a thing. Ebony K. Williams is mm, she mm, is mm, 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 very shea butter Twitter. Okay, very very shea butter Twitter. Always mad at the world. You know, has a lot of sense. Definitely has a lot of great points. But you can only take in small doses because it's like I don't want to be woke every time I see you. I don't want to have conversations about statistics and a black man and 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 what's going on like. Mm. And so she brought that to the show. And just like, okay, very much just like Amanda Sills with The Real, the second that, you know, production decided to cast that to try and add the token or the woke person, right? Because after the pandemic, everybody and their mama was sitting there trying to record it for their reality shows and everybody wanted to record it, everybody protesting it. Oh my God, we suddenly care about black lives and da 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 And it's like, when it's done so inauthentically, when it's done so unorganically, when it's done in a point two where you cast people that are known to not spoon feed you but force that shit in your mouth because they, they come from a, like, we're going to call the thing a thing. Ebony K. Williams, Amanda Sills, they definitely come from the school of I shouldn't have to teach you a goddamn thing you should already know. So their approach is very abrasive and very just aggressive. And yeah, I'm calling black women aggressive. I am. I am. But y'all understand what the fuck I'm saying. It's like, it's not like very casual. It's not like a, it, it's just too much. It's too much. And so, like I said, just like how Amanda Sills was on the rail and they tried to change the format of that up and it did not work. And that was the decline of that show. Same shit happened over here. How you going to have all of these white women that like to get drunk and argue about super shit and then take this person who not saying that what she fighting for is bullshit. I'm not saying none of that. I'm just saying it's too much. We don't want to hear that at cocktail hour. Okay. I'm not trying to sit down and discuss a thesis or, or, you know, have these debates about what's going on in the world and mass incarceration. And we, we're not trying to do all of that, baby. Okay. We're trying to pop this pussy. Okay. Pop this pussy and then, you know, take some pills because we're too old to be popping our backs out, but we're still doing it at 72, you know, 72 years old. Like that's what New York was given to my knowledge because I didn't watch the goddamn show. But as soon as Ebony K came up there, she fucked the thing up. To the point where they took the show off and they, you know, took a couple of years or whatever. How are we going to reboot this? How are we going to reboot this? Y'all see how I just ignored that whole webpage that I tried to bring up because it's, it's too much to read. It's too much to read. <laughs> it's too much to fucking read. But basically, Ebony K. Williams fucked up the show single-handedly. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. To the point where now it's transpired into Ultimate Girl Trip because y'all know we got the Ultimate Girl Trip that Real Housewives does, that Bravo, that, well, that Peacock, okay, that Bravo, you know, allows them to go on or whatever. They go on a little trip and then it's kind of like an all-stars or whatever. And then, you know, the first season was very all-stars and then the rest of the seasons have been very much who's available. Who's available, right? Okay, because season four is apparently supposed to be like a redo of season two just on an island. And it's like, girl, we, we didn't even like season two or three. So why do you think that we want to... Okay. Okay. And so hearing the cast for season four, which hasn't even been shot yet. I mean, it hasn't even been, um, what do you call it? Release yet. We were already mad about that. And so we like, oh my God, cross our fingers for a good season five cast. Then we found out that season five cast is actually going to be a soft reboot for Real Housewives of New York legacy. What is legacy? Basically legacy is Bravo's and Peacock's idea of Let's keep the older, you know, generation of Real Housewives in New York, but, like, let's not completely get rid of them. We're going to give them their own show, and we're just going to call it Legacy, right? So we can have two shows. I think that's stupid as fuck, and I'm going to tell you why. It can work moving forward because, see, here's the problem that this, 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 this premiere, 
here's the problem that this premiere done did, right? Because this premiere worked so well to the point where it's like, ooh, 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 ooh Atlanta, okay, Potomac, don't get too comfortable. Mm -mm, mm -mm, Salt Lake City, you already need one. Like, that's going to be an issue moving forward. But before we even got to any of that, my whole thing was, and I'm sure a lot of fans was, because part of what worked with this premiere is the fact that we're finally seeing New York City. Because when you think of New York, you think of New York City. I'm sorry, hands down, it is what the fuck it is. This is where I live. This is my home, baby. So, okay, I'm going to claim it. Okay, I'm going to claim it and I'm going to brag about it, right? But when people think about New York, they think Times Square. They think Statue of Liberty. Ain't nobody fucking thinking about Albany. Ain't nobody fucking thinking about Long Island. Even though it's one of the brothers, ain't nobody fucking thinking about Long Island. Or Staten Island. Or the Hamptons. We're not. The Hamptons might as well be its own state. Ain't nobody thinking about that when you think of New York. When you think of New York, you think of New York City. Right. And so I felt like if they wanted to keep around those old hacks, they could have. They very well could have. All they had to do was introduce a brand new cast on a brand new show under a brand new title. Right. OK. So instead of this being season 15, episode one, a.k.a. season one, episode one of a brand new reboot of a show. All they had to do was have Real Housewives of New York. And then with this new group of girls that we're about to talk about, have Real Housewives of New York City. Because Bravo ain't that damn smart to where they like, ooh, let's call this legacy because, you know, maybe it could work out. That, no, they ain't that damn smart. They ain't that damn smart to think that far ahead. They not. All they had to do was keep the same motherfucking heads going. Real Housewives of New York and then Real Housewives of New York City, right? You have the older generation, then you have the younger generation. You have those that represent the state as a whole, and then you have those that represent Manhattan. Okay? Not Manhattan, but, you know, just New York City, period, right? Because it's different boroughs here, right? And so that's how we get to this show. And I was like, okay, let me give it a chance because I tried to give Dubai a chance. I, I wasn't here for it. I wasn't here. I wasn't here for it. I wasn't here for it at all. And so um, this kind of put my eye when I looked at the trailer. I was like, okay, okay. I kind of like actually liked a couple of characters. And as I was watching this shit, I was like, I didn't realize how important that is when you watching a show, right? So like, cause you know, it's been a long time since I feel like I've watched a reality show and I actually like the people that I'm watching, right? Like Real Housewives of Potomac has really made that horrible for me, right? Because you watch that show and it's just like every last goddamn person in that show, aside from Candace, is unlikable. And even Candace has her unlikable moments. We ain't gonna discuss it. But every last person in that show is unlikable. And so... It's been rare and kind of fresh to now have a show where it's like, oh, I actually like a couple of these girls, okay? I actually like a couple of them, right? Now, I don't know any of their names, my heart, except the ones I give a fuck about, okay? So now I'm a, that was the time where I'm going to go back to the article and try to, okay, piece together some shit. Not the Wi-Fi sign. Not the Wi-Fi sign of my shit. This shit better not be buffering. I do know that. I do know that. But it says, hmm... July 16th, premiere of New York, season 14, baby, it's 15. Or am I off? Okay, the rebooted stars um, Cy, Uber, Aaron, Jenna, Giselle, and Bren. Okay, okay. And I can tell you right based off of that, my favorites is Cy, Jenna, and Bren. Period. Period. Cy, Jenna, and Bren. Those are my favorites, okay? Those are my favorites, okay? Now, um, is there anything else that is worth, like, mentioning up here? Okay, so this is everybody, right? That's Uber, that's Aaron, that's Cy. That's the girl whose name I don't know that I just said. That's Bren, and that's uh, Jenna. Favorite, favorite, favorite. The rest, including him, irrelevant. Irrelevant. Okay? Now, when we go into what the article says, it says, why did the old housewives end? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, alleged tension amongst cast members over race and politics and the pressures of filming during the pandemic. Yeah, like, did nobody want to hear that shit? Did not, nobody want to fucking hear that shit, right? After former cast members Tinsley left filming midway during season 12 and Dorinda was put on pause following its conclusions, the cast was smaller than in past seasons despite the addition of Ebony K., the housewives of first, you know, black housewife, right? Um, who joined the franchise following Bravo's push to address his missteps and shortcomings with race after nationwide reckoning with racism in 2020. Yeah, doing the most, doing the most, trying to appease motherfuckers that didn't even watch the show to begin with, like, girl, 
girl. Girl. So let's go ahead and get into this new cast, okay? Is there any information about them, or should I have memorized this? Okay, well, listen, I guess now is just the point where I get my motherfucking opinion. <laughs> okay, listen, I watched the show, and I mean, it was cute. It was cute. It was cute. It was definitely given like old reality TV days. Like, I saw this clip of Kim K and Kourtney Kardashian. Matter of fact, let me bring that up. Let me, yeah, let me go ahead and bring that up because it definitely adds to the point of this video and what I'm about to say. But I saw this, um, not a dolphin in the Bronx. I need to do a video about that. Okay, let me see, let me see, let me see, because I just saved it. Did I save it? Wait, ah, oh, shit. Oh, please, 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 please. Okay, I found it, I found it, I found it. I found it, I found it, okay. Now let me go ahead and bring this up so y'all can see Stop playing with it, Ryan. Okay, let's watch this. I just remember like bad movies where bombs explode in the subway. Where do you even go? I don't know. This is really scary. Hi, can we buy two tickets on the subway? Where would you like to go? Wait, is there something called On the Six? That was JLo's album's name. Where? Number six, yes, we have it. Can both go through at once? No, I don't know. Courtney, we're skinny enough. Hurry, get with. I'm gonna get. Let's go to Marnie's. I'd rather eat Subway. <laughs> Do you guys ever get scared on the Subway? <laughs> Have you ever been robbed? Have you ever robbed anyone? No. So was the crowd. Yo. Okay, so the point of that is that I saw that today and I was like, yo, I miss shit like that. Like, real reality TV, like, the simple life, Nicole and Paris type shit. Like, that shit made me giggle because... Nowadays, and I'm sure if you go through the comments, you'll see a bunch of people like, oh my God, here they are. Because I saw another video of Chris and Kylie shopping in like Whole Foods, right? And they're like, no, I want to push the cart. And they're like learning how to use a debit card and shit like that. And of course, you got the you got the Ebony K. Williams. The Ebony K. Williams. You got Shea Butter Twitter. You got Amanda Seals in the comments like, oh, the privilege. Oh, how rich. Da, 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 da. I like to empathize with everybody. And at the end of the fucking day, whether you poor, broke, whatever, like everybody's going to have something that the next person doesn't have. It, so I just look at it like I can't imagine, nor do I know what it's like to be like Kylie where you're famous and rich from birth and you were robbed of the simple things that we take for granted every fucking day. Right? Right? But I'm so reality TV'd out that I'm tired of seeing about the struggle and bitches fighting over dumb shit. Like, no, I want to watch these bitches sit and fight over fucking cheese while wearing $20,000 gowns. I do. I want to watch some shit that I can't relate to because reality TV was meant to be a fucking escape, okay? And so that brings me back to the days of fun, like the simple life, like where we will watch Nicole and Kent, um, Chad, I'm mixing the names up, but y'all know what the fuck I'm saying. But that reminds me of those days, right? And this clip that I just played, it reminds me of those days where reality TV wasn't that deep. It wasn't that deep. It was fun, right? It was fun. And that's what this episode reminded me of. Because honestly, when they all really got together and they did like the, you know, because they got to come together, they got to have a cast scene, they got to get the shit going. They argue over motherfuckers not wanting to show up to a restaurant because it didn't match their level of quality. And the restaurant that they were talking about was Catch. Okay, Catch. Okay. Now, I've never been to Catch, but last time I checked, Catch was supposed to be like one of those like elite, like, ooh, ooh, I'm a celebrity. Catch me at Catch. Like, catch me at Taos. You know, like there's certain like restaurants where it's like paparazzi is always there. You know, that's where all the popular celebrities and influence and all of them go. I don't know why they didn't want to be there. Maybe they felt like, oh, well, Catch is now because it didn't used to be, but I guess maybe they feel like now, like, Catch is so lowbrow because now, Y'all got influencers going to fashion shows, going to New York Fashion Week. So now, uh, you know, we just had the fucking Matt Gala and it was nothing but influencers there. Okay. More than celebrities. So it's like, maybe they feel like, oh, shit is getting watered down now. And it's not really so much of an elite thing. I don't know. But the point is that they was arguing about going to a fucking restaurant and arguing over a charcuterie board and cheese. And it was entertaining. 
It was entertaining. You know why? Because it was funny. It was funny. Okay. It was funny. And I want to say relatable. I want to say relatable because I'm not even going to hold you. What made these girls likable is that obviously I'm trying to go into this with a fine tooth comb and, and like, okay, and let me find a problem. Let me, you know what I mean? Because it's like, okay, this is a reboot. This is a reboot. Okay. Bravo like decided to fire everybody and do a whole new show 15 seasons in. Okay, it is a whole new group of girls that we don't know. And then we already got the Atlantas and the and the Potomacs and then the Jen Shaws that they got to compete with. Like, let's see. But just from watching the show, it was like, okay, this is not bad. Like, it just felt like, I don't know. It just felt like authentic housewives in authentic New York. Especially when you have every girl, right? Like, and also, so it felt like a true, genuine sister, right? Every girl is from a different borough. And that I am worried about because here's the thing with New York. New York is so identifiable. And it, like, if you're from New York, then you know. Like, I can tell you honestly where each of them live. Like, literally, what fucking block. And that's what I'm scared of because certain things need to be blurred out. Okay, like if YouTubers can do it with vlogs, I'm going to need production to do that. Because when they went over to, I think it was Sai's house, right? Yeah, because Sai was talking about how she used to live in a, um, you know, in a project. She was, you know, from Flatbush, okay, Afro-Latina, whatever. Show them a dirty house, like, so clean up some dishes, right? She living in a brownstone, and when she opened up the door, baby, they had a scaffold right across the street with the address on it. And I said, listen, Bravo, y'all gonna have to do better. Y'all gotta do better, because with New York, it's so easy to figure out where you live. Just when you say brownstones alone, it's like you only know, like, you know it's only in certain neighborhoods, right? You know it's, it's gonna be in certain locations. So I just feel like they need to do a better job of that, because New York landmarks and just buildings are so identifiable, I'm worried about their safety as they continue to grow. Because this show is going to be a hit. It is. If for nothing else, Bryn alone, I can tell she's going to be a problem. I don't know if y'all remember Potomac season one. Probably not because a lot of y'all didn't start watching Potomac until, okay, <laughs> Chun-Li. Chun-Li got fired. But Potomac season one, Ashley was fun. Ashley was fun as fuck. She was young. She was vibrant. That's when Karen couldn't stand her ass because she felt like, oh, Ashley is being, you know, making an impression on Raven, who's Karen Zorda. Like, but Ashley was a fun younger. And that's when Ashley was in her 20s. She had only been married to that Crip Creeper for like two, three years. And she was fun. She was likable. Like that first two, three seasons. That is what Brent is giving me. Brent is giving me young Hollywood-esque party girl socialite. And her sense of humor is like funny as hell. Funny as hell. I'm like, yo, that is definitely the type of bitch that I would fuck with. Same sense of humor. Flirtatious as fuck. Like, she's the type that you can go out with, you gonna have a good time. It's gonna be a thought girl summer, okay? Not a hot girl summer. It's gonna be a thought girl summer, okay? We're gonna get the drinks. We're gonna get the niggas. We're gonna get the bags. We're gonna get the trips. We're gonna get all of that, right? And we're gonna be laughing our asses off the entire fucking time, okay? And I also like Sa as well, because even I don't feel like Sa is like a fire starter, like a fire spitter. Like, she's not an initiator to me, like a Bryn. Like, Bryn gives me, like, head of the girl group. Sai gives me Cynthia tease, right? But Sai definitely gives me, like, ride or die, like, down for the fun. She gives me down for the fun. Like, she she may not be the main girl of the girls, but she's that girl's girl, where it's like, oh, no, bitch, I'm down. Okay, who, who tires me busting out? Like, you need me to come... Th like, something about her just felt real... Down to earth, real Boricua, real round the way, like, but I got money now. Like, it was giving me everything, okay? And Jenna, 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 the gay girl of the show, okay? Our first gay housewife, okay? Who apparently got outed by Time. Oh, was it Time magazine? It was an out magazine. I feel like, I feel like they said Time in a promo, and then here I am reading a fucking article from Time. Look at me being a traitor already to my sister, okay? But Jenna, Jenna, the first gay housewife, and I'm here for it. I'm, I'm well, she ain't the first. But then again, y'all know how these girls on these housewife shows. It, listen, everybody fake gay. Everybody fake gay. Look at Drew. Look at Drew. Look at Drew and her storyline that's coming up. She must have heard. She must have heard about this show filming Jenna and was like, mm, I'm gonna beat it to the punch. I'm gonna beat, I'm gonna literally beat it to the punch. I'm gonna eat it to the punch. Okay. Cause look at what look at what the fuck is about to happen on Atlanta Housewives, right? But we got Jenna. Um First official out the closet gay. And I love it. I love it. Fashionable. That's another thing about this show, too. Like, 
everybody is like real fashionable and I'm not the fashion girl at all but everybody's real fashionable like New York like it's just true New York it's just true New York like I feel like New York is slept on when it comes to like shit like fashion and shit like that and like and y'all be looking at other places but again y'all are used to dealing with these older hags that y'all had the past 15 seasons but now everything about this show is just giving New York City even from the black and gold and the intro card like everything is just fresh urban, young, hip, gritty. Like, I see that intro and I think of State of New York, okay? I think of, it's not State of New York, it's called Empire State Mind. Child, they might as well have that as a fucking intro, right? Right. But when I think of Jenna, I, I really like Jenna. I do, I do, I do. I do feel like she has an un, uh, like uncanny resemblance to J-Lo. So from that one, we're not gonna call Jenna, um, Jenna, we're gonna call her Gay-Lo. Mm-hmm. Because she looks exactly, exa matter of fact, let me show y'all. Let me show y'all a goddamn picture. That girl looks exactly like J-Lo. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. Look at this picture that I'm about to fucking show. And please tell me that I am lying. Tell me I'm lying. Look at this. That's J-Lo on the right, and that's Jenna. The fucking same person. They are the same person. Have you ever seen Jenna and J-Lo in a room together? Let's start there. Okay, it's the same motherfucking person. Okay, so we might even get a appearance from Mark Anthony, okay, or Casper up on this goddamn show this season. Who fucking knows? Okay, but I'm here for Miss Galo. I'm here. I'm here for Miss Gay Lopez. I am here. And I don't know, y'all. I think that is I think this is gonna be cute. I think this is gonna be cute. Like even when they showed the trailer, I was like, okay, okay. You know, when um Aaron and Bryn went into the back room and then they ended up making up and then the girl <laughs> broke her chair and then they come out wearing her sequins and then you know, it was just cute, sisterhood, girly, fun, and I don't know. I feel like there are stories to tell here. I mean, this is why I love New York, right? Because New York is so diverse, period. And again, that was one of the main problems with the original show. New York is diverse. This is the melting pot of the world. There's no other place like it. Trust me. I've tried to move out and I keep getting pulled back because I just love it too much. Like, this is the melting pot of the world. And so I love that this cast is kind of reflecting that, like, Black, Afro-Latina, white, you know, um, what that girl say? Islam? No. Mm -mm. Israeli? Like, because you come here, you're going to find all of that. You're going to find all of that. And I love that they all live in different boroughs, and I love that it's a genuine friendship. So, I'm here to see where it's going to go, but I'm telling you, Brent is going to be the fucking problem. Brent is the star of the show. Make that bitch center peach, okay? Right now, they got Galo as the center peach, and I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it, okay? Because y'all saw how she, she almost took that bitch ma uh, mama. Don't get me wrong. I don't know her name. I don't know her name. But y'all saw how her mama was over that house. And the way she kept hugging her mother, I said, ooh, ooh. I was like, girl, you know your mama gay? You know your mama gay, right? <laughs> like, okay. And it didn't help that she had a short little buzz cut, too. I was like, ooh. You about to have a new stepmama. Because I don't know how, how, how um how young the girl is, but she said that her mother was like 60 something. Like basically her mother was only like seven to 10 years older than Galo. And I'm like, ooh, ooh that could work. That could work. Cause the way that they keep hugging each other, that could work. Or maybe it's already been working and that's why they so close and comfortable. I don't know, but we gonna fucking see. We gonna fucking see. Galo is center peach. So we gonna see what she bringing, even though it seems to me that Brandon is going to be the Ashley of the group. I just hope that she's the early Ashley and not the latter Ashley because y'all already done seen the fuck shit that Ashley been doing lately. Don't worry. We're going to do a video on that material, okay? The brawl that happened, okay? So hopefully Brynn gives us older, fun Ashley, okay? Because I'm here for her flirting with everybody. Her, like, the shit that she was saying, I was like, bitch, I've said this shit to people. Like, you don't go up to a married couple and be like, okay, so when y'all get divorced, because... My turn. Like, I... <laughs> Brent is me. Brent is me. Me, her, and Cy. We would be the best of friends. We would be the best of friends. And Galo. Off of us. We would be the best of friends. Okay, the new sex in the city. Okay, fuck a sex in the city. We're the it in the city. Okay? The it in the city. The it girls in the city. Bitch, we are the city. Okay? Definitely let me know what y'all thought about this shit down in the comment box below. I enjoyed it. I did. Did y'all like it? Like, are y'all here for it? What cities do you feel like it's gonna be next? Like, I feel like definitely Real Housewives of Atlanta should be next. I've been saying the same thing about 
all of these shows forever. Like, I've been saying it for years, okay? Even since season 10. I've been saying it for years. Like, bro, Housewives of Atlanta needs a, a real reboot. They should have did it with 15. And, like, that should be the max. Like, all of these shows should have a max, right? Because even when you think of, like, school, you go to school for four years and then you graduate. Period. That's how it should be with these reality shows. Every four, five, six, seven years, there needs to be a shakeup. Even Degrassi knew when the fuck to move on and call it Degrassi the next generation. Degrassi X, Degrassi whatever, right? Reality shows need to do the same thing. And I've always, always for years, I've been saying it for the last five years. Royal Housewives of Atlanta, what they need to do is they need to have a season called New Blood. Where you have all of the cast as it is now, or the cast as we've known it, okay? I don't necessarily want to see Nene back, but just for a transitional season, that would be fine. But you have the, one of the best cats that we've had yet, or whatever. That's debatable what and who that is. You have that cast of girls that we know. And then during that season, they all introduce a friend. So that way we get to see the old cast. Then we get to see the new friends who are all, you know, going to be a part of the new season or whatever on their own. And we see all of them together. Have all of the ladies bring on a friend, Okay. By that season 16. Then season 17, they swap places. And then the friends of become the housewives. And then all the women that we know become friends of. And so I don't feel like we need them for both seasons. Only really need it for the transition season. But really, they could pop in and out as mentors. Okay? During that second season when we finally have those friends of housewives as the actual housewives. But that's what needs to happen. Next season, every girl on the cast of the cast right now needs to introduce somebody. Period. And the reason why I say, like, let's go back to a, a different cast is because some people I would want to stay, right? I would want um, Marlo to stay. I would want Drew to stay. And I would probably want maybe Courtney. Maybe Courtney. Um, and it's not based off of me liking people. I'm just saying have those girls that are new that haven't really expired their peach yet that can still bring that familiarity, but that youngness to it, right? And then cast three new girls that Kenya, Candy, and Sheree bring in. Boom, that will work right there. Boom, that will work. Marlo, Drew, and Courtney can say, okay, um, and then have Kenya, Candy, and Sheree bring in new girls. I always felt like my dream cast would be Marlo, Marlo, Latoya, Drew, Eva, Shamia, and Tanya. Or, if not Tanya, Claudia. And, um, uh, what's the girl from um, Black? Shamari. Okay? So let me repeat that. My dream cast would be Shamari, Eva, Shamia, Portia, Drew, Claudia, Chow, and whoever else I said. But yes, I want to see a cast of all fun young girls. I do. I do. And I feel like we've already had the girls. It's just production hasn't matched them up. But like the, we have the girls that we need for a good season. Production, just fucking hire me or take my advice. So somebody send this to Candy, okay? Jamie, if you're watching this, bitch, tell Candy to tell production of what. The, ooh, you probably won't because Candy can't. Mm, Candy wouldn't be on the show. But I'm sorry. She got to go. She got to go. Candy and Candy, they got to go. They bringing the show down. They bringing the show down. But this ain't about Atlanta Housewives, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I feel like if anything, they're going to be the next ones to have a legacy reboot. But let me know what the fuck y'all think about this show and who y'all think going to be next as part of the legacy reboot. All right? And I will see y'all in the next one. I'm trying to fuck now, so baby, let's dance. Rock my baby right here on my legs, man. Welcome to West.